Grade tens, this is the second video that we'll be looking at on analytical geometry. And in this video, we're moving on past the theory now and focusing more on the application kind of question that you can get in grade 10. So before we can begin with this question, what's quite important for you is to make sure that you've got the formulas written down from the first video and that you understand the basic idea behind those formulas, especially the ones that had to deal with the gradient where we looked at parallel and perpendicular lines. So in this video, we're going to be looking at a very common past paper type question. And what we are told is that in the diagram, we see that C is a point on the Y axis. And you'll remember that any time you've got a point on the Y axis, then you know that the X value or the X coordinate is zero. So that's a very important fact to start with. It then says to us that we've got the points A, 0, 4, B, 4, negative 4, the points C and D, and they all form the vertices of a parallelogram. So the moment you read this word parallelogram, you need to go and ask yourself, what are the properties of parallelograms that I know about? So a few things just to remind yourself is that firstly, opposite sides are equal. So in other words, that side and that side will be equal to each other. And then that side and that side will be equal to each other as well. Likewise, you also know that the opposite sides are parallel. So the orange sides will be parallel to each other. The green sides will be parallel to each other. And you also know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So those are the first few properties that you know. And then it further tells us that K is a point zero and then negative two and a quarter. And L is a point on AB. And it tells us that those two lines are parallel to each other. Now, because we're given a parallelogram and we know that we've got so many parallel sides here, you're probably thinking to yourself already that we're going to have to deal with the fact that the gradient of parallel lines is equal to each other. So that's probably going to come along somewhere or another in this question. To begin with, though, it says calculate the length of the diagonal DB. So if we focus on the parallelogram in front of us, A, B, C, and D, like so, then the diagonal DB would sit down the center, something like so. So in red there, we've got that diagonal D, B. And so when it says calculate the length of that diagonal, we know that anytime you see the word length, you're thinking of your distance formula. And when we write out the distance formula, you take the line that you're looking for. So in this case, DB, and we'll say that DB is equal to the square root. And you don't need to write the formula out for yourself. But we're going to take D as our point number one and B as our point number two. So basically, we can therefore say that that'll be X1 and that'll be Y1. And over here, the four will be X2 and the negative four will be Y2. Now, you don't have to show that, but it's just very important that you make sure you don't mix up the coordinates. And it wouldn't have mattered whether I used D or B as point 1 and 2, as long as I don't mix them up. So, when doing that, we would get 4 minus minus 4, all squared from our distance formula. And then it'll be plus, and we've got minus 4 minus 2 all squared all underneath the square root and when you go and plug that in your calculator you'll get 4 plus 4 which is 8 8 squared is 64 plus minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6 all squared which gives us 36 that comes to the square root of 100 which means that db 
is 10 units. So we know that DB is 10 units in length. So now we can go and have a look at question two. So question one was quite a nice, easy introduction. And in question two, it says to us, calculate the coordinates of M, the midpoint of DB. So again, we're focusing on this diagonal DB, and we are looking for the midpoint of that diagonal. When you see something like midpoint, you're immediately thinking of the word bisect, or to cut in half. And all that we need to go and use is our midpoint formula. So we know that the midpoint is M in this case, because we are told that we're using the letter M. We know that it has an X, Y coordinate. And just like before, you need to choose either point D or point B to be your point number one. So I'll choose this to be my point number one, and I'll choose B to be my point number two. And so you can say that negative four will be X1, that two will be Y1, the four will be X2, and the negative four will be Y2. And then we simply plug it into our midpoint formula, which in this case, would give us four plus minus four divided by two. And for the Y coordinate, it would be minus four plus two divided by two. And when you go and plug that in your calculator, you would get zero, four minus four is zero, and then negative four plus two gives you minus two divided by two, which is minus one. And if you think about it, you should always look and see, does my answer make sense? And so the coordinate 0, negative 1 sits roughly about over there. And so, yes, that does more or less make sense for us. If I ever we had got, say, a very positive number over there, we might start to doubt our answer. Let's then move on and have a look at question 3. Question three says to us then, calculate the gradient of the line AD. So this line over here, AD, we want to find the gradient of that line. Watch the way I use my notation here. So we know that the symbol for gradient is a lowercase m, and we're going to use a subscript AD to talk about whichever line we're dealing with. And we know that the gradient formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We've got our change in y over our change in x. And so what we need to do is pick one of those points to be point number one, one to be point number two. So I'll choose that point there to be point number one, that point there to be point number two. Again, if you swap that around, you'd still get the same answer. So the zero would be x1, the four would be y1, the negative 4 would be x2, and the 2 over there would be y2. And so when we went to go and substitute that in, it would be 2 minus 4 over minus 4 minus 0. And 2 minus 4, you know, comes out as negative 2 over negative 4, which is positive a half. So the gradient of that line is positive a half. Now we're on to question four, and question four here says prove that the line AD is perpendicular to the line AB. So in other words, they want us to prove that this angle over there that I've written in red is 90 degrees. Now whenever you see anything that talks about 90 degrees perpendicular, you know that the formula that you're going to be working with is that the gradient of one line multiplied by the gradient of the second line equals negative one. This will come into play somewhere along the line. Now we've already worked out the gradient of the line AD and we know that it's equaled to a half. What we need though is the gradient of the line AB. And so again, we simply go and use our gradient formula. We'll let the point A be 1, the point B be 2. 
And you will get to a point where you don't need to write this one and this two anymore, just in the beginning to get you used to it. And so when we do that, it's going to come out as minus four, minus four over four minus zero. And so that comes out as eight or minus eight over four, which is minus two. And so if you went and checked, you could see that M, or the gradient of AD, multiplied by the gradient of AB, well, that would come out as a half times negative 2. So there's our half, as well as our negative 2. And when we multiply those two together, we get negative 1. And so we have therefore proved that line AD is perpendicular to the line AB. Because when you multiply their gradients together, you get negative 1. So we've used this formula over here. We've calculated the gradient of both lines. And once we've done that, we've multiplied them together and proved that they give us negative 1. And any time you get this negative 1, you know that the lines are perpendicular to each other. The last question here says, determine the coordinate of C. Now, this is quite an interesting question because there's many ways that you can do it or many different approaches that you can try that'll give you the right answer. The way that I would like to do it, though, is to demonstrate the idea behind collinear points. So if you look at the line BC that I've highlighted in orange, you'll see that the point B and the point C technically are on the same line. They lie on the line BC. And because they lie on that line BC, what you can take away is that they are collinear. And if lines are collinear, they have equal gradients. So if I can work out the gradient of the line BC, I can work out what that coordinate of C is. Because we said as well at the beginning that C lies on the y-axis, which means that it's got an x-coordinate equal to 0. So if you went down here, we could write that C has the coordinates 0 and y. And we need to work out that y-coordinate. And so we should already know that the gradient of line AD, so the gradient of line AD is a half. We proved that in an earlier question. And it's parallel to the line BC. And when two lines are parallel, we know that they have equal gradients. So you can make the note that AD is parallel to BC. Therefore, they have equal gradients. And if you want to write that out mathematically, you can say that the gradient of AD must equal the gradient of BC. And so therefore, you can see the gradient of BC is equal to a half. Then we can go and conclude with our question, because we know that the gradient of BC, they're on the same line. So using our gradient formula, we would get minus 4 minus y, minus 4 minus y, over 4 minus 0. We can then go and substitute the value that we worked out because of those parallel lines. So we would get a half is equal to minus 4 minus y, over 4, because 4 minus 0 is 4. We're then going to multiply both sides by 4 so that we can bring that 4 up. And so it would be 4 over 2 on the left-hand side, which would give us 2 is equal to minus 4 minus y. So then if we group our like terms together, we will get y is equal to minus 4 minus 2, which is minus 6. And so the y-coordinate over here for point C is negative 6.